Hello, this is your webinar, and it is focusing on the figure eight in the classroom. The five systems that School Moose focuses on are your support system, the focus system, sensory system, auditory and visual systems. We feel like all these systems come together to create the academic battery and what students need to be successful in the classroom academically and with their behavior. We also know that the five big ideas in reading include phonemic awareness, phonics instruction, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. If we put those five big ideas on top of this battery, you can see that the battery is illuminating these five big ideas, meaning School Moose supports with all our different activities and interventions our goals within those five big ideas. Figure 8 is an important piece to supporting those goals because a figure 8 covers many different aspects of the batteries. You can improve focus with the figure 8, you can improve some vision skills with the figure 8, sensory processing might be improved with the figure 8, and how does this all work? Probably the person who's made the figure 8 the most evidence-based technique would be Dr. Deborah Sunbeck. She's written two books, Infinity Walk, and her newest one is The Complete Infinity Walk. For more information, you can go to her website, infinitywalk.org. In her book, she talks about the neurophysiology behind the figure eight. She talks about the two hemispheres and how they talk to each other, and I love Dr. Jill Bolt-Taylor's work, and you can watch her complete TED Talk, which is fascinating, uh, at uh, the TED.com. She talks about the two hemispheres of the brain being really distinct and having very distinct roles. The two hemispheres of the brain's roles are to be able to complete tasks that are serial and parallel processing. It's important that the brain is able to integrate and understand what type of processing is necessary for whatever task we're doing. For instance, Linear processing, like spelling words, focusing on details, categorizing and organizing, and those types of activities are basically activities of the serial processing or left brain in most people. When we're in serial processing mode, we're kind of separate from everybody else. The two words we, she uses is, I am. I am separate from everybody else. I'm detail. I'm working on organizing, getting the facts down. And then when we're in parallel processing, we're thinking more in pictures and we're learning kinesthetically through movement. We focus more on the present uh, moment instead of the past and the future like you would in serial processing. We notice more the sensory stimulation around us and we notice how the present moment feels, sounds, tastes. And in this particular type of brain processing, we're connected together. So the two words to describe us when we're most in that type of brain processing is we are. It's more collaborative. It's more a cooperative type of, of learning that's going on. Students who have a hard time making a figure eight, it's usually indicative of how the brain is processing information. For instance, when I have students in the classroom make a figure eight for me on paper, you can see the ones who make sort of all one circle or a cornucopia sort of image or two separate circles that they try to bring together at the midline at that X where those two circles are integrated. They have a very difficult time with that. And as you can see, I always have students go up the middle and around because if you go up to the left and around, that's how we form letters. So I don't, I usually say, if you're going to do the figure eight, please try to do it correctly and reinforce the way that we make our letters. And we always start when we're making our letters up and around. If you think about handwriting without tears and their magic C, and that's one of the points they always start with, it's you always start going up and around. The figure eight can be used especially well before a test. Sometimes I have students just turn over their papers and make, they don't have to be huge, they can make small figure eights. When they're doing this, they're getting both hemispheres integrated and ready for the test. Gets them out of that brainstem response of fight, flight, or freeze that might happen when a test starts. 
and keeps their brain energy and attention into the frontal lobe where they have higher level thinking skills and executive functioning skills available. Whenever we do cross lateral movement, like cross crawls that are very popular now in schools, that's another way that we're getting that brain integration and getting our serial and our parallel processing to work together as a team to accomplish tasks. As part of School Moves, we use figure eights in small little cards at desks so that students can have access to them at any time and can do them anytime they're feeling stressed, anytime they're feeling like they don't understand a concept. I have the students do 10 figure eights with their right hand going up to the left and around, and then I have them switch and do 10 figure eights with their left hand. And then with both hands, with the two fingers, I have them with both hands up and around. This is just a quick activity you can do. And on the back of our figure eight cards, we have rapid naming dots. And rapid naming dots are a way to improve the brain processing speed, so, so the speed to which those two hemispheres are talking to one another. And that's really important for flexibility of thought. Well, that's it in a nutshell. I hope you understand why the figure eight is an important, quick and easy and simple activity to add to your daily routines. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you on the next webinar.